You may think that Anand is actually crushing Magnus here, especially after this move. He's taking space in all this queen size. And Magnus, it seems like he's not doing so well here, but you have no idea what's about to happen. He pushes, he goes here, you know, trying maybe some sort of discovery with the rook attacking the bishop. This, 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 this. And now they're gonna exchange pieces. And this is where it's gonna get very interesting. Bishop c6 and rook d2. And now, to be honest, if you're Anand with the white pieces, you may think I'm perfectly fine with white. I have an open column. I have a pawn structure that is really good. I created a sort of blockade on the queen side. I have everything going for me. And look at the pieces that Magnus has. They look, they don't look good. And now Magnus came with a move that 99% of people wouldn't play. And this is sacrificing this pawn on g3 out of nowhere. Magnus is saying here, I'm going to play for the win. I'm going to play for the win. And he sacrifices this pawn to actually have activity with his rook. Because taking it with the, with, with the king, obviously what's going to happen is that you just go rook check and after you're going to take this pawn, right? Otherwise you take with the knight, still the rook is coming and then the rook is actually coming here attacking this it's unpleasant and with the sacrifice of one pawn he managed to actually activate the pieces instead Anand said i don't want any of this i don't want any of this and he just went back with the king and now look he went rook here defending the pawn he's attacking the bishop now he's spinning the knight that cannot take this bishop because of this rook bishop d6 Anand is saying you know what i am attacking your bishop and i'm gonna take it on the next move i'm intercepting actually the pin between the rooks and now bishop b4 and rook d5. It still seems like, you know, it's going to be a draw, but it's not. It's not going to be a draw, but it looks like it. Knight d8, the rook comes. I mean, the king is coming, you know, to the, to the queen side and now knight c6. That's an amazing move. I mean, the move that was, that was played by Anand here was just retreating. But you're thinking, why not taking the knight? Because now you take you take and the bishop is actually taking back and the problem at the end is that there is this pawn that falls so knight c6 amazing move and now he exchanged he took on g3 and you may think again this position is going to be a draw there is no way that one of the players will allow to enter in this fortress because he looks like a fortress you actually can't go here it went like this knight here anand said your knight is the best piece on the board my bishop is pretty crap, so I'm gonna exchange it. King c1, which wasn't the best move in the position, but anyway, what Anand is thinking is that he's gonna go with the king, like this, and he's gonna create a blockade, because this pawn is controlling this square, this knight is controlling this one, which means he's a fortress. This king can never come and enter in this position. But yeah, this is not knowing Magnus actually to think this, because what he found is just out of this world. Because look at this, he went like that, king c5, the one, he went like this, they played few moves and then he went b4, take, look at this one, that's a pawn sacrifice, again, second pawn, and now just to enter with the king, now he went c3, and thinking like, honestly, I would be super scared to actually enter with my king here, because I'm thinking, he's gonna have this, and then this one is going to queen, so what is this exactly, I don't want this, but actually, after this move, okay, he takes, he pushes, he goes with the king. And now he's saying, yes, you can push your pawn. But what's going to happen is that I'm going to push this one. And when you take, this one is a red carpet. That's crazy. That's crazy. Look at this. Went like that. Bishop here. The reason why he played bishop here is also, you know, there is this kind of tactics. Knight take f5 and then pushing this one as well. And here, actually Anand blundered as you can see, and he took on f5. Thinking, if you take, now I'm pushing this one and you cannot stop my pawns. You cannot stop both. If you take this one, I'm queening. And actually, if you look at this position, honestly, there are a lot of players. I mean, just admit it. A lot of players would just resign after this move e6, right? After pushing. But actually, look, he went b4, e7, take, king here, push, threatening to queen. And what Anand saw 
is that he could queen like this. You take, and now he queens there. And look at this. If you queen here, for instance, it's a draw. It's a draw because of stalemate with queen e3. That's crazy. Because even if you go here, I give you a check here. And now you are forced to take the queen. And this is a stalemate. Look at this. This pawn is actually blocking and this queen is controlling these two squares. And the king has no square. This is what Anand saw. But Magnus came with something pretty crazy. Again, he didn't queen. He decided to just basically block the connection. And actually here there was a, an easier move, which is crazy and which is a little bit like a computer, I would say, which is C3. It's really hard to see. Really, really hard to see a move like C3. For instance, a move like queen check, you just go with the king. And it's fine because this king can never come closer. You're threatening to queen on the next move. That's insane. Because you go, okay, check, but now I can cover with the bishop. If you go check here, I can go back, king d1. And look at this. There is no more check. It's hard to believe. There is no more check. You can't check here and you can't check here. Both are controlled. That's insane, honestly. <laughs> Riyad, you're insane. I know I'm insane. I hope I'm insane. I hope. The worst thing that someone can tell you is that you're normal. I hope I'm not. So, look at this, how it went in the game. Let's go back in the game. So he went bishop takes a8, he queened. Now he played this, check. The bishop came here and he went queen e5. And look what happens here. If you queen, this is what Anon thought. If you queen, this is a draw again. Queen e3 check. If you take, is a stalemate. If you go here, I take the bishop. And this is a stalemate you can never take. I mean, you can't. I mean, now you have to take the queen in a way, but this is a stalemate. So this is what Anon thought. You know, he was even smiling during the game. And he was like, yeah, he even did something like, he was so happy because he thought that after this move, he was a draw. But here, Magnus played a move that honestly, that is absolutely insane. He under promoted to a knight and he's saying basically with this and this, there is no way you can stop my pawn going forward. King a3, c3, and there's nothing you can do. Queen here, knight here, there's nothing you can do. Queen takes, you push. And this is a queen on the next move with two pieces up. He under promoted, sacrificed two pawns in the end game, under promoted to a knight to actually win with a pawn at the end. And here basically, you know, Anand decided to, uh, to resign the game. Basically because, you know, you can just queen. And this is totally game over. It's actually a forced checkmate in 21 moves. But uh, if you're a computer, 